On a recent ferry trip to Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada, I saw a large poster touting the amazing low-carbon future of Fortis, B.C., a future of renewable and low-carbon gas and transportation, gas-fired heat pumps, and other miraculous things. I, not living in Canada, hadn't heard of Fortis, B.C., but this all smacked of greenwashing, so I took some photos and knew I had a topic for a future decarbonized video. So here we are in the future. So what is greenwashing? It describes the practice of using jargon and buzzwords to distract and mislead consumers and, and government officials from the dirty practices of a company. And it's very common. The New York State Attorney General just filed a case against JBS USA, the American arm of the Brazilian meat packer, the world's largest, for making a series of deceptive statements. Agriculture could be part of the climate solution. Bacon, chicken wings, and steak with net zero emissions. It's possible. Actually, not really. JBS also claimed they would be carbon neutral by 2040 without any plan to meet that commitment. And this is a company that grows cattle in what was once the Amazon rainforest, so their product is among the least environmentally friendly meat in the world. I've chosen to pick on Fortis BC, but thousands of other companies are just as bad, maybe worse. As we walk through Fortis BC statements, hopefully you'll learn enough to spot greenwashing elsewhere and learn what questions to ask. Let's start with that's cooking with gas. Gas. Cooking with gas. gas. Cooking with gas. gas. We all cook better when we're cooking with gas. gas. Gas is so hot it's not on when it's off. It's the only way to cook. That's what I was taught. Now we're cooking with gas originated in the mid to late 1930s as an advertising slogan thought up by the natural gas industry to convince people to use gas rather than electricity to power their kitchen stoves. Instead of going through the usual advertising route, they tried a new approach. They planted the phrase with Bob Hope's writers. They, in turn, wrote it into one of his radio scripts. Now we're cooking with gas quickly became a catchphrase for the wise cracking Hope, who repeated it in both radio and movie performances. Others adopted the phrase, adding it to scripts for popular radio shows. Before the start of World War II, the phrase was already American slang, thanks to the radio programs, movies, and even a Daffy Duck cartoon where it was spoken to indicate positive progress or achievement. At the time, this wasn't greenwashing, just marketing. Play to gas's strengths, like instant on and off, and ignore its weaknesses, like air quality, which, to be fair, was unknown at the time, and not great performance for simmering, and that electric stoves are just easier to use. Now we have induction stoves, which are better in pretty much all measures, but the sense that cooking with gas is best still prevails. Fortis BC is building on nearly a century of misleading marketing by the gas industry. The very term natural gas is a marketing ploy, and I avoid it. I prefer the terms fossil gas and biogas to differentiate gas that's a fossil fuel from what Fortis BC calls renewable natural gas. Here we see Fortis BC's service area, which covers most of the settlements of British Columbia, aka BC. They are primarily a fossil gas utility, but they do serve a few settlements with electricity. I'll be focusing on their gas business, just like they do. Since Fortis BC is a monopoly, what's their motivation? But they do have competition from BC Hydro, the electric company that is so dominated by hydropower that the name of the utility is the Greek word for water. And the main reason for moving from fossil gas to electricity is because electricity is cleaner. 
Fortis BC is concerned not just about individuals and companies switching to cleaner electricity, but also the government encouraging that transition, like providing a rebate for installing a heat pump. BC is also considering a ban on fossil gas-powered appliances. If bans like this go into place, Fortis BC's days are numbered. So they're responding with FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The greenwashing is part of the uncertainty and doubt sections. If natural gas isn't so bad, then we don't need measures to transition off of it. They're also doing their best to create fear, but that's not greenwashing. To be clear, fossil gas is that bad. In addition to the CO2 that inevitably comes from combustion, there's also leakage. Fossil gas is primarily methane, which is a much stronger greenhouse gas than CO2. The amount of leakage is hotly debated and varies from situation to situation, but the best way to prevent leakage is to keep the fossil gas underground. Most of Fortis BC's greenwashing focuses on renewable natural gas, or RNG. At Fortis BC, we're finding low carbon energy in unlikely places, like biogas captured from cow manure, compost, and wastewater to create renewable natural gas. That's energy for a better BC. Roughly 50% of their videos from the last year are greenwashing. There are a couple about what to do if you smell a gas leak, understanding your bill, and energy efficiency, which is not greenwashing. But they talk way more about renewable natural gas than all those topics combined. Contrary to what you might think by looking at Fortis BC's website, RNG is nothing new. When I started blogging in 2010, my first post was about anaerobic digesters, which produce biogas, or what Fortis BC calls RNG. Once it's dehumidified and filtered, the output of a digester can be injected into a gas pipeline and it's chemically indistinguishable from fossil gas. It can be produced at any location where you have a lot of organic waste material, like a dairy farm or a landfill. 14 years ago, this was a fully commercial ready technology and I'm a big fan of it. But there are two numbers to understand. RNG from Fortis BC is over 50% more expensive than fossil gas and that 0.3% of the total gas supplied by Fortis BC was renewable. Both of those numbers are likely to get better over the years, but not dramatically. The nature of converting waste material to RNG is limited by the availability of the organic material and its dispersed nature means it's difficult to bring down costs. There's no way for Fortis BC to meet a significant fraction of their current demand with RNG. To be clear, RNG is not greenwashing. It's a real thing and it does improve the environment. The greenwashing is the way Fortis BC talks about it. They give the impression that RNG is a significant and growing part of their business which is not true. They project visions of a future where everyone will heat their homes with RNG, which is not even remotely possible. The amount of RNG they deliver is buried in an annual report and not mentioned in any of the videos. So the only way for BC and its citizens to clean up their act is electrification, which is what Fortis BC is afraid of so they do as much as possible to confuse the issue. For instance, let's look at the cost chart that compares fossil gas, RNG, and electricity on a joule by joule basis. That's not the right way to do it. The one thing you can do with both is heating. The best gas furnaces have an efficiency of around 98%. They tout gas heat pumps which I've never heard of before, but according to Fortis BC, they have efficiency of about 130%. But electrically powered heat pumps, which are common, have an efficiency between 300 and 500%. If you factor that in, electricity with a heat pump is a cheaper and cleaner way to heat your home. But you'd never know that looking at the Fortis BC graph. Fortis BC also has a section talking about hydrogen and the three colors they're working with, green, blue, and turquoise. 
As regular viewers of my channel may have noted, I'm not a big fan of hydrogen, but there are hard to decarbonize niches where it might make sense. But Fortis BC's customers are homes and businesses that can easily convert to clean electricity and hydrogen makes no sense for them. This is also where Fortis BC's use of the term low carbon as opposed to renewable is important. Blue and turquoise hydrogen come from fossil gas and their use will lead to methane leaks, which warms the planet and is a finite resource, not a renewable one. There is no business or policy case for hydrogen for Fortis BC's customers. It just can't compete with electrification. Fossil gas can barely compete with electricity and hydrogen would be much more expensive than fossil gas. If half of what a company talks about is less than 1% of their business, you probably have greenwashing. If they're talking about technologies that can't be scaled to meet their customers' needs, you probably have greenwashing. And if they have small scale or pilot programs that sound high tech and cutting edge, but are just Potemkin villages of bad ideas, you definitely have greenwashing. Fortis BC has a large amount of capital equipment, mainly pipelines, that are at risk of becoming what financial types call stranded or what normal people call worthless. The longer they can put off the inevitable end of their business, the better for their stockholders. But this comes at the cost of everyone else by delaying decarbonization. The businesses they're trying to protect are the easiest to decarbonize. And the policies they're fighting are among the least expensive ways to reduce carbon emissions. And their primary tool is misinformation, aka greenwashing. If you've learned something from this video, please like and subscribe. I now have 180 subscribers and I'd love this video to take me to 200. If you want to support this channel financially, you can buy me a coffee. The link is below and right next to me. Please share this video with anyone you know who is considering getting rid of fossil gas and transitioning to electricity.